Hello, this is Alexandra Lantz, and this is my midterm project. So first, looking at public education in the United States and what its purpose is, or more the original purpose and why public education was created in the first place. So during the 17th century, students were educated at home. However, society felt the need for children to be educated in, in a distinct institution. It, so these first schools really seem to be centered around this idea of creating a well-rounded citizen. John Dewey said in the school as a social center that at first it was associated with the church and schools were really put into place to teach children about the constitution and legislation. Once again, creating a well-rounded and loyal American citizen. David Lavery said that there were three main goals of education for democratic equality or to prepare children for productive roles in society, for social efficiency or to gain skills to enhance productivity and promote economic growth, and for social mobility to compete for social positions. But today, what is the real purpose of public education or how has it changed since then? And how did we go from 17th century schools which promoted academic skills and core religious values to our 21st century schools that emphasize data and test scores? Public education really began to evolve in the 20th century to combat President Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty. And after that, there really came a plethora of reform policies that seemed to level the playing field for all students. There was the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, A Nation at Risk, No Child Left Behind, Every Student Succeeds Act, Race to the Top, and the Common Core, just to name a few. And these reform policies of the 20th century all had a common theme, which was equal education for all. Let's take a closer look at the Common Core using Kate Barrington's article, An In-Depth Look at the Common Core. So she had stated one goal of the Common Core was to standardize education across all 50 states so that students could receive the same level of instruction no matter where they lived. This really put an emphasis on teaching to the test, which forced districts, administrators, and teachers to analyze test scores and data. And this was all in an effort to close the achievement gap and ensure every student was getting the quality education that they would need to be successful. So looking at public education in the United States and talking about who has influence over these educational standards. Without a doubt, politicians have a huge influence on public education. Um, around the 20th century, when these reform policies were being created without any research or proof that public schools were failing, politicians launched campaigns to make education tougher and more competitive. Politicians were able to use the media to broaden their platform, which really gave them a big voice over the whole nation, pretty much a lot bigger than these local districts or teachers and administrators who didn't have as large of a voice. Politicians were also able to use the media to really get their message across. The federal government also has a huge influence on public education, and they exert direct power over local schools. So let's talk about how this influence on public education really moved from the local government to the federal government. Spring stated that historically, most educational decisions were made by a school's local government. With the creation of the U.S. Department of Education and Secretary of Education in 1979, the federal government's role in education really expanded. The federal government is able to influence state and local schools with money. By the 21st century, some states were completely dependent on federal grants, meaning those states were dependent those states that were dependent were forced to standardize their curriculum. So that money was a huge way that the federal government was able to control these local schools and districts. Money really seems to be the driving force in many education reform policies. If you have more money, you have more of a voice. 
So I chose to examine Finland's educational practices. So how it works is very similar to the United States. Equality is extremely important. Every school has the same national goal and pulls from the same school of university trained educators. So no matter where a student lives, they receive the same level of education, which was one of the goals of the Common Core in the United States. Finnish classrooms are learner-centered and focus on self-assessment, and there are no mandated standardized tests in Finland aside from one exam given during senior year of high school. So there are no rankings, comparisons, or competition between students, schools, or regions. A little more about their educational governance system. Finland schools are publicly funded. The people running government agencies are educators. Government, trade unions, and employer organizations are an integrated part of the policy-making process, so they all work together to make these education policies. All schools must follow a national curriculum, which includes objectives for core content. However, the local education authorities and schools are responsible for drawing up their own curriculum within this framework for their own school. And in reference to Barack Obama's Race to the Top initiative, one Helsinki principal stated, I think, in fact, teachers would tear off their shirts if you only measure the statistics, you miss the human aspect, which goes back to Finland really values the child as a whole, not the school or the state as a whole. One big difference between Finland and the United States Um, kind of talks about their teacher preparation. So while speaking about successful high-performing countries, former Secretary of Education Duncan stated that teachers in Finland receive world-class preparation. Typically, only the top 10% of college graduates enter the teacher profession. However, it is easier to mainstream the teaching profession in a small nation or province like Finland. Finland only has eight university-based teacher preparation programs, which is very different than the United States, which has more than 1,400 education schools. So it is a lot easier for Finland to make sure that their education and their teacher education is mainstreamed and similar because it's a lot smaller. So this brings us to the question, which is better, the United States or Finland, who has a better educational system? And it's really difficult to say. According to statistics in core subjects, Finland is scoring much better than the United States. And Finland is one of the top scoring nations in reading, math, and science. Both nations have a lot of the same values at the root of their educational system. One big difference is that Finland is more student-centered and focuses less on competition and rankings and standards. Finland also highly recognizes teachers and holds their teacher education to a higher standard. But as I stated previously, it is a lot easier to have a higher standard for teacher education when there are so little teacher education schools. I do think the United States is slowly adopting more of these practices with um, education being a little more student-centered. But it is interesting to note that even with an influx of immigrants in the past few years, less than 5% of children in Finland are poor. In the United States, more than 20% of children are living in poverty, and the population is roughly 60 times as large. So that brings me to my final point. Finland looks like they have an amazing education system, and I'm sure they do. Their students are very successful, but countries are not always on the same statistical playing field to begin with, so it can be difficult to rank their education systems against each other because the United States and Finland do have a lot in common with kind of a national set of standards that each state or schools are supposed to interpret for themselves. So I know at my school, we write our own curriculum maps, but it's based off of the common core standards that we were given. So I think they are very similar and it's difficult to say which one is truly better.